Hello my hook and homies. Well, I don't know if this will be um, half hour long like last time, but I thought I would do another crochet with me. But um, I don't really have a whole lot to talk about. Um, but if you just want company to sit and crochet, then that's great. Uh, I'll let you see what, how far I am and explain what I'm doing. So this is what I have so far. And you're actually looking at the the back. So if I turn it around. And this is a uh, that's not quite as orange as it's looking. It's more in a red hue, but it looks orange on the camera. Anyway, this is a Tunisian loop stitch. And <clears throat> I am using my DeVille or Cruella. <laughs> I think it was called a Cruella. It's the Tunisian hook. It's a furls was given to me. It's got a real pretty end on it and see how it's kind of like that. And actually it says right here, I don't know if the camera will pick it up, right, where'd it go? Right here it says furls and it's a five and a half millimeter. So I'm not color controlling. This is just the way the yarn. Let me show you the cake. What's left of it. This is what the cake looks like. I showed it in my previous crochet with me. It was um, one of the cakes I picked up at Ollie's for four ninety nine, and um, it is a fine number two and. Yeah, it's the Red Heart It's a Wrap Hues. And they're calling it, the colorway is called Mosaic. Kind of funky, but I kind of like it. Um, so that's what I have been doing. I've ran through every colorway now, one time. And I'm not going to turn it back around <clears throat> to get back to work on it, but <clears throat> excuse me. It looks like I'll, I'll run through the colorway one more time and then I'll be done. Which means the scarf will be a, a very decent length and it's a, actually a very decent width. It's, it's hard to tell because it's on the hook, but yeah. <clears throat> and because I'm so close to the camera. I don't know what's wrong with my throat. <sighs> but yeah, that is what I am doing tonight. Hold on. Okay. I had to pause to kind of clear my throat. The, um, going forward is not so bad. But it's just going back that makes me nervous because that's usually if I'm going to drop a stitch, that's when it'll happen. And stitches get crossed over. I know you probably can't tell, but they do. I just, um, I really love this stitch for the, uh, you know, the fine, super fine weight style of yarns. Because it's it's uniform. It feels so ununiform, but it, there is uniformity in the disuniformity. What is the word I'm thinking of? I can't even talk right. <laughs> you know, I hope you know what I mean. It 
it, it the stitch feels kind of awkward when you do it but it produces a beautiful lot of weight um, in this case scarf or wrap actually you can call it either one it is going to be it is wide enough to be a wrap so yeah and it is Wednesday morning 3 a.m. as I'm recording this so I don't know when I'll upload it if I'll wait until later today or maybe lady to lady later tomorrow evening but at any rate that is when I'm actually recording it I try not to get myself in too big of a rush on this uh, going back part because nothing more aggravating than dropping that stitch and then trying to guess which one of those threads was it <laughs> and actually this is the first um, the first yarn and the first project that I found that I was actually able to use this furls hook I've tried many 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 times with many many other yarns and it just did not work I think it's because of um, I don't know if you can see how rounded that head is on this thing it's just it's rounded I'm used to more of a hmm how can I say let me get one right here see the head on this one I don't know if it's showing up but it's got more of a point right here I'm used to something more like that but <clears throat> some some reason it's actually working for me on this one now that's a dangerous place too when it starts to change colors it's a very um, stiff tightly woven right there and it's a good place to mess up and it would not be the first time Whew. I sigh relief every time I get by that because now we're going into the purple color way which right there the repeat is starting over again of course there again you got to realize you're seeing the back so yep and I probably should have brought out my ring light but because the colors are looking kind of washed out on the camera I noticed that on my last upload So I don't know if having the ring light would fix that problem or make it worse. But at any rate, I shall just keep on trucking. The way that um, you use these Tunisian hooks, it almost feels like you're going through the motions of playing a violin to some degree. <laughs> And I was saying earlier that wouldn't it be cool if it played a little tune while you used it? <laughs> uh, I'm being silly, of course. So. Alright, if it looks a little awkward, it's because, well, I am a little awkward. I'm kind of lean, kind of funny to uh, stay in frame here. Now we're going on the front pass, which I like a whole lot better than the back pass when it comes to these. I'm so glad that I found this pattern because it takes these little you know super fine weight yarns and 
it makes them work up so much faster. But yet it's light, it's airy, it's lofty, it's fashionable. <laughs> I don't know what you guys are doing with these kind of cakes. If you uh, if you've made something with them, let me know in the comments. Because I would like to know. I generally end up making different kinds of lightweight um, scarves because that's just what I enjoy doing. And you know, a fashion scarf, not a, not really a, not a function scarf, not for really keeping you warm, obviously. Although in these funky colors, I don't know. I guess this would be more of a casual fashion that you would just pair with jeans. I've got a cough again. Hold on. Jeez. Taking a coughing spell every time when I hit record. And I don't know why that is. Well, yes, I do. I think I might know kind of why that is. Because I don't talk very often. And when I do finally record, I'm yak, yak, yakking. My throat's not used, to, not used to it. I guess that's the only thing that really makes sense. I know you know, probably can't tell anything about what I'm doing, but I doubt if I can show you. But on the back, or well, the front, actually it's the front. There are bumps that stick up right here, all the way along, and I grab and go under those. And yeah, if you don't know what you're looking for it would be real easy to mess up I hear people say oh Tunisian so easy well yes and no you've got to learn really how to look at it you've got to learn how to see it which is true with you know crochet in general I, I learned a, a lot of stitches and stitch combinations are it's not so much about knowing the stitch as it is knowing you know becoming familiar with how it's supposed to look and I think that's why a lot of people end up having trouble doing their edges and they end up with you know kind of going this way and this way and this way and in and out and in and out is because they haven't quite learned what it should look like when they get to that point or maybe that's just me yeah what do you guys think about these colors like it was it's a combination that I myself would have never thrown together it's like going from a purple to a I guess you would call it a a turquoise and it's going into this like fuchsia pink which is not showing up true to color and then into this orange red, which is more red than orange, like I said. But what, and gray, I would never have paired it with gray. Like if anything, <clears throat> I would have paired it with white or maybe black. But I would never have thought to do pair it with gray, but my daughter-in-law really likes it. And she's young. So she's hip, she's hop, she's happening. <laughs> She said she really liked the, the color combo in it, so that's good enough for me. Let me flip it back around here so that you're seeing some of the front that I'm working on. Yeah, front stitches. There is a, a little bit of a difference, you know. <clears throat> oh, the blanket my, that I, I was working on last time. I got it done. It is finished. I should have brought it over here to show you. Um, though I couldn't show you the whole thing. I'm going to hopefully get pictures taken of it tomorrow. Maybe do a quick video upload on it as a foe. But I'm very happy with how it turned out. All the fringe that I had on the ends. I ended up 
um, braiding those so it's got braided <clears throat> braided fringe on the ends and I really like the way it looks and it's huge it turned out so huge because I, I just kept going until I ran out of the first color which was red or uh, I think it was called strawberry and once I ran out of that I had to stop mm -hmm. you know because I couldn't repeat the, the pattern if that makes sense so I had a little bit guys let me forget I'm on the I'm on the back pass right now but I want to show you I had just a little bit of the other colors left over and so I made this uh, Alpine stitch twisted ear warmer <clears throat> Yep. I had to incorporate some white to go at the back because I didn't have enough of each color left over for for it to be big enough to go all the way around your head if I did, if I wouldn't have added the white. Am I talking a little bit fast and all over the map? I hope not. But I feel like I am. Yep, that's it. I don't know <clears throat> if anybody would ever want to wear so many colors, but I think it's really pretty. Maybe if nothing else, my daughter-in-law will, will wear it um, when she's uh, just needing to keep her head warm here at the house. I love the Alpine Stitch Twisted Ear Warmer. I, I just love making it. And aren't, isn't that yarn beautiful? It's really a shame that Line Brandon's not going to be making any more of this. And in case you didn't watch the last upload, first of all, shame on you. No. <laughs> but it's the Lion Brand Ice Cream yarn. Just a hint of strawberry, then the orange, and I think this was blueberry, and lime, and lemon. I didn't have the purple one, which I'm going to assume was probably called grape because it was sold out so it's that <clears throat> okay I said I was on the back pass <laughs> yes I have messed up before I have set this down to go to the bathroom get a drink blah blah whatever came back picked it up mid row didn't know if I was going forward or back and yeah that was a little frustrating I have thought about taking uh, one of my stitch markers, you know, the little plastic ones that look like safety pins, and putting an F on one and a B on another one, one for forward, one for back, so that if I do have to put it down mid-row, I can either pop on the F for forward or the B for back. That way, when I pick it back up, I know which way I was, which way I was going, because it's not really obvious. <clears throat> It's really not. With Tunisian, it's just, it's not. Especially when you're working with this really thin thread stuff. Because that's all this is. What is this, like five threads together? Something like that. So. But I like this kind of uh, yarn. And... Hopefully someone else out there will like it too. Because I am always open to sell things. And it will probably be one of a kind. Because I'm going to put this whole cake in it. And then um, I've only got the one cake so there won't be another one. I was looking at some faux leather earlier because I'm thinking about making my own tags to put on my, my uh, crochet things. Um, back when I was into scrapbooking real hardcore, I had these, um, I had bought these Memory Makers metal embossing letters, uh, well, 
guess they're called embossing letters. I can't really remember. It's been so long ago. But they're metal and they're for, you hammer the letter into um, leather, wood, metal, what have you. So, I still have them. I actually have two sets. So, I was thinking about going to the, I don't know, Michael's or wherever, Hobby Lobby, and getting a sheet of the faux leather and uh, what I can do is I can dip those stamps either in an ink, a permanent ink, or maybe heat up the tips, one or the other, and you know, just hammer it into the leather, make my own uh, leather tags for my makes. Because I'm just too cheap to pay a dollar a tag. And since, you know, the stamps, the alphabet stamps that I have were like 60 bucks a set back in the day when I bought them. Uh, yeah, I think maybe that would be a good use of them. But we've got, you know, half of the tools, why not at least try it? What I say. That's what I say. And I guess that'll be something I can show you guys in the future if that works out. Although I don't know when I'm going to be back. At Michael's or Hobby Lobby or wherever. To buy the this, this stuff. But <clears throat> I did look for it online. But... <clears throat> It was still kind of pricey. Either either the shipping made it more than I wanted to pay, or they wanted to sell you these little 8 inch by 1 inch strips for like 5 bucks. <laughs> I'm like, no. No, I know I can do better than that. Wish I had a leather outlet here. Not a leather outlet. Leather. Oh, what do they call it? Leather hobby shop, you know. <laughs> I can't think of the name of it. Um, because you can go there sometimes and buy their uh, scrap for way, way cheaper. <clears throat> and, you know, just to make a little label for your hats and things, it doesn't have to be big at all. And, anyway, let's see, we are at uh, around 23 minutes. can't believe how quick time flies, especially when I say have nothing to talk about. Somehow I talked for 23 minutes now. Hopefully not talking your ear off. But yeah, I want to make, I mean I want to try to make my own labels, tags, whatever you want to call them. I want to try. See, now that I, uh, like I say, it's all about knowing how to look at it and something didn't look right. Let me see. Yeah, I did. I went through the wrong. Let's go through that one. Yarn over. And then you don't yarn over the, the last one. Okay. <clears throat> now we got it. <clears throat> Goodness gracious. So many things so many things I want to do but I want to start putting tags on all my makes because whether or not half of the stuff ends up out in the world I would like to know there's a tag on it I don't know if that's weird I've got generic tags but and I've got some real fancy smancy tags that they're the kind you have to iron on, so they're not really made for yarn. But they say, Handmade with Love by Christy Klepper. And they've got a heart garland that goes all around. But I'm about out of those. Those were not cheap. So I've been hoarding those back and using them very sparingly. I can still sew them on an afghan or a hat or anything like that, and I have, but they're really made for quilting and stuff like that. 
which I don't do anymore. I do not do it because I don't have a sewing machine anymore because it got stolen because people suck and they just take anything oh whoa that was close the thread all kind of ran together and it was saying guess which one yeah So, <clears throat> yeah, but yeah, I really, seriously, if you guys have made something with this, I'd like to know what everybody else is doing, not just with the, the red heart, but even like any of these thin yarns, you know, from Hobby, Hobium, Hobby Lobby. All those places that carry these really fine, fine cakes. I can't imagine trying to make something really tight and thin with it. Okay, 26 and a half minutes. Last time I think I got 33 minutes before it shut off. So, I don't know if that'll be the case this time or not seven people if I get cut off I'll say goodbye now but if not I'm gonna keep rambling seven people at my son's job have the you know what crud right now and I'm like oh so hoping he doesn't end up bringing it home to me so hoping and I try not to worry about it but it's just one of them things you know Nobody wants to be sick. And we are almost done on this back pass. Okay, it's blinking. Okay, bye guys. Thanks for stopping in. Hit the thumbs up if you don't mind. It's going to shut off. It is blinking. <laughs>